Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. And we are in Germany. We're in Rotenburg up the Tauber. Yes, uh, it's supposed to be the most romantic town in Bavaria. So we came to see here what's up. We arrived last night really late, so we stayed at the hotel Uhl near the what's it called? The Plönlein. <laughs> the very famous shot you always see when you look up the city online. Yeah. We just put some stuff away in our car and we're starting at the beginning of the city near the city wall that you can see behind us. Let's go! <laughs> Rotenburg op de Tauber is mostly known for its brightly colored houses, charming narrow streets and numerous watchtowers. When you walk around here, it just feels like you're stepping back in time or inside a fairy tale book. This small town is located in Bavaria, in the southern part of Germany, along the Romantic Road. It's one of the best preserved medieval towns in Europe because it hasn't been bombed during the Second World War. The city is super easy to get around on foot, so you could actually see everything in one day. However, we really suggest that you consider spending a night here. As the old city is fully involved, your adventure of Rutenburg probably starts at one of the six gates. We start our day at the south of the city near the Spitalgate or Spitaltor. Instead of passing through the gate, we decide to enter the bridge on the left side, which leads you into the Spitalhof. Here you can wander through the halls that were once home to knights, keeping watch over the walls. You can follow all the way down, where you end up in the former knight's pit. It's almost like a small park that you can follow further along the walls. However, we find ourselves back to the main road to get on the Spitalgasse. This street leads to the famous Siebersturm, which looks picture perfect on both sides. Once you pass through, you will find yourself in the most popular location in all of town. We arrived at the Plön line. This must be the most iconic landmark in all of Rothenburg. It's known for this yellow half timber building in the center and in the front you can see this cute little fountain. No wonder this spot is so popular and so often photographed. If you look from afar, it just looks straight out of a fairy tale storybook or a postcard with all the clouds in the back. It's just absolutely stunning and if you come early in the morning, you just might have the whole place to yourself. From here we move forward on the Schmiedgasse, which is the most famous shopping street in town. It's filled with these cute little boutiques and shops that sell all kinds of handicrafts and local specialties. It's the perfect place to go shopping for your souvenirs. There's one specific shop that you find in the street. It has this medieval atmosphere. Make sure to stop by because they have amazing gadgets. We bought some souvenirs here for ourselves, but also for the family. We were looking at these vials that look like potion vials and they're actually filled with all kinds of schnapps like little liquors, which is super fun in funky colors. Also definitely make sure to check out downstairs in the cellar where they decorated it all medieval style. It looks like a dungeon, very nicely done. So don't miss out on that. Further, we recommend to just enjoy here the beautiful architecture that you see, the details of the houses, especially the beautiful iron signs that hang on the sides of the many buildings. These are called the Zunftzeichen or guild signs and these were used to symbolize the profession and the purpose of a building. Nowadays, they usually mark a hotel or a restaurant, uh, which is pretty cool. It all adds to the medieval atmosphere of the town.
At the end of the street, we will now end up in the heart of the town, which is the Market Square or Marktplatz. And as you can already tell, it's a quite a popular place for all the tourists and one of the more lively areas in summer. You will instantly notice the imposing 13th century town hall, the Rathaus, which is dominating the square. For just 2 euro 50, you can visit the town hall's tower. From there you will have a magnificent 360 panoramic view of the old town and beautiful half-timbered houses called Fachwerkhäuser. We actually didn't know about this tower at the time of visiting, so we sadly miss climbing those 222 steps up. Did you know that in Rothenburg you can experience Christmas all year round? There is a famous Christmas shop, Käthe Wohlfahrt. It's easy to spot with its Christmas delivery truck topped with piles of gifts. Christmas lovers can stock up on new decorations as it has the largest ornament collection in Germany. You can also learn more about local traditions and Germany's Christmas history at the German Christmas Museum, the Deutsches Weihnachtsmuseum. After this we were actually getting a little bit hungry so we started to look for a place to eat. There are many places all over town so no worries you will find something. We ended up at this cozy cafe uh, that had some seatings outside and we ordered some refreshing beer or Moritz and myself I took uh, some Riesling wine which is something typical from the region and it was super nice. Um, we also took something to eat, uh, we ordered a Flammkuchen to share, as you can tell it looks a little bit like a pizza, like a German kind of pizza let's say, it's also like a dough uh, spread with some fresh cheese kind of on top and onions and then some bacon pieces, it was really delicious, we had a good time before we decided to proceed with our little adventure. After lunch, we started just wandering around the town, finding some cute little alleys until we ended up at the Klingentor, which you see in front of you. So the whole city of Rothenburg, the old town, is encircled with a wall, which you can still walk today. So here at this Klingentor, we decided to go up to start our tour of the whole wall. There are many entry points all over the city uh, where you can start your walking tour from and the best part is that it's uh, accessible all day and it's free. In total there are actually 42 gatehouses and towers so you can actually spend quite some time up here. Uh, we would suggest to plan out like around two hours. Just so you know these walls are one of the best preserved medieval walls that there are all over Germany. Some of the parts even date back to the 13th and 14th century. Other parts were heavily damaged or destroyed uh, during the war, but then they have been rebuilt afterwards. We end our tower walk near the Markus Turm, which is in our opinion one of the most photogenic towers in the city. Just look at it, it's gorgeous with those beautiful surroundings of the colorful buildings, then this fountain with all the flowers. It speaks for itself that it's one of the most beloved photo spots, so you've probably seen a picture or two of this on the internet. From here we took our time to wander a little bit more around in the little alleyways and just get lost in the medieval charm of the place. From there we continued towards the castle gardens. This is actually the ideal place to take a little breather from the heat if you're visiting in the summer and from the crowds. You also have a beautiful view here of the old town towards the other side of the city and when you look down you can even see the Taube Valley. The garden itself is beautifully designed with flower beds and enough benches to relax in the shade. And you will also stumble upon eight sandstone sculptures that represent the four seasons and the four elements. We decided to take a small break. And now we're gonna get some Schneeballen, a typical dessert from this region. You'll see what it is. I don't know how to explain it yet. It might be super dry. 
That's what we heard, yes. So let's check it out. Let's buy some and try them out. So we just ate the Schneeballen. That's how it's called, right? Schneeballen. Yeah, they're round indeed, quite humongous. Uh, we're gonna leave our sincere review. Uh, we didn't like it at all. Yeah, uh, it was like there was not much to it. It's just like dough, like a doughy texture, and just like uh, in the form of a, of a snowball, but nothing impressive. No, the taste is in the outer layer, so you can choose your flavors as you could see. Yes. So basically we had uh, chocolate with uh, marzipan, so that's what we mostly mm. tasted when we just bit into it. But it's horrible to eat as well, so Moritz started, we shared one, uh, thank god. Since there's like so humongous, you can't really like have your mouth on, uh, mouth on there and you're gonna get yourself messy with all full of chocolate. Yeah, I just cleaned up because I had it all over my nose and my chin, because I really had to you know, dig um, in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> horrible. A, fun a funny thing I read was that somebody said, uh, there's a reason why it didn't make itself uh, go further than out, like <laughs> than just Rotenburg. So it didn't really travel outside these walls. It is an, it's not a hit, and there are also not a lot of people in those shops. Yeah, that was surprising. Like it's quite empty in, the, in this in these yeah, shops, well, which should have been maybe a hint. Mm. <laughs> I don't think that local people actually go to these. No, and there are a lot of the shops though. Uh, you can try it for yourself. Yeah. We're always of the opinion, try things for yourself. That's also why we tried it, although we saw reviews like really uh, bashing it. But yeah. It is just, I guess, like a traditional thing around here. So it's always yeah. nice to try these things. <laughs> so try it yourself. Yes. <laughs> The Schneeballen weren't really doing it for us. We were still hungry and it was actually almost dinner time. So we decided to go look for something to eat. There are plenty of traditional Franconian Bavarian places to find in the old town. And its cuisine is mostly known for warm hearted dishes. So think of goulash, bratwurst, steak, with a side of homemade knuddles or Käsespätzle. Uh, so all really yummy filling stuff uh, we actually had a super delicious uh, dinner at the Alte Kelle so if you're looking for the typical Bavarian food then this is definitely the place for you So that brings us to the end of our day in Rothenburg of the Taube. We had a wonderful day here. We decided to spend the rest of the evening watching the sunset back at the castle gardens, which is the perfect place to see the sun go down. If you need any more info for planning your own trip to Rothenburg of the Taube, make sure to check out our blog post. You can find the link down below. We hope you enjoyed uh, following us around on a day trip to this cute little medieval city. Thank you so much for watching and we see you next time.